So I wanted to make an informal video about some gotchas when it comes to modding spell masons. Um, I have somebody in the Discord uh, forum who wanted to make a cool spell called Wind Tunnel, which is basically, it takes inspiration from the Nova spells. The Nova spells don't act on any pre-existing targets. So for instance, Pain Nova just uh, does a Nova radius and will just damage whoever's in that radius around you. So Wind Tunnel is like target column uh, plus uh, push, but then it doesn't take into consideration other targets. Very cool idea. So um, in order to make this, uh, he put together a few other spells and it almost worked perfectly. And there's a few confusing things about spell mason spells that I wanted to clear up. So effect is the main workhorse of spells. It has a state and the state is passed between spells in a chain. So for instance, if you add a target to that state, uh, the next spell will receive that same state object and will be have access to that target. Uh, the other important thing is prediction. Prediction is a boolean which is going to be set to true whenever a prediction is being run about what's going to happen. And then when you actually cast, the function is called again once with prediction set to false. So anything visual that's happening needs to be gated by a check that the prediction isn't true. So a common thing that will happen, for example, is if something is being awaited during a prediction call, it messes everything up. You can see things aren't really updating. Uh, this guy's red for some reason up there. It flashed right there. The reason why is because it's awaiting the animation of the column going whoop, and that only needs to happen during the non-prediction call when you actually cast the spell so that it waits to until it triggers the next spell. It waits for the column to go whoop and grow and then it triggers the next spell. Uh, that's what await is for. You can see it right here. It grows and then they push. So this is being awaited, which means that it should only happen during the real cast, during the non-prediction cast. So if I change that to say only happen when it's non-prediction, then you can see we get this super fast prediction call where it's not waiting on any animations. Uh, await is also used for like uh, particles. Uh, so for in instance, mana steel, um, here's a make mana trail that returns a promise and you can await promises. So I make an array of promises and then I await all of them. So it says when all of the mana trails come back into me, carry on. That's basically how that works. Um, so yeah, the original code. So the few things that were wrong with it was there was a for loop that was checking each target. So targets are like if I do target circle, Okay, now all of these guys that are red are gonna be a target on the state object. The way that you get the targets is with get current targets, and that'll take targeted units and targeted pickups from the state, from the effect state. Okay, um, and then oftentimes for most spells, you wanna loop through those. Like if you wanna slash each unit, you wanna loop through those and slash. For this one though, it's meant to be a Nova spell, so it works irrespective of targets. So to fix this spell as it, as it is right now, where things aren't really working, but it kind of works if you hold still for a little bit, we want to remove this for loop. We don't actually care about those targets. We want to add an if not prediction, just like I said before, uh, around the animate. And then um, because it wants to act on the targets inside of the cone, let me just refresh this. So now we don't want to use the targets from, uh, circle, even if there are targets in circle. We only want to push the targets that are inside of the cone, or excuse me, the column. So the way that we're doing that, we're getting a targeting column, and then we're saying get potential targets if their position, their vec2, which means their xy coordinate, is inside the column. So now we have an array of the targets. Now we don't need to sort them, and we don't need to add target. This is a function that will add that target to the effect state. And we don't need to do that because it's gonna be like a Nova. So we're actually gonna remove this. There's no need to sort them. And now we have an array of all of the units or pickups inside of that column. So now we can use that directly. You can see push targets right here is trying to get targets from the state. Again, we don't want those. So instead of using push targets, we're just gonna use the targets from within column. And look at that. So now it's working. And just to prove that it's not using the target uh, circle guys, it's only pushing the ones inside of the column. 
it's not pushing the ones that are targeted, even though those ones would get bloated or slashed or whatever. So, uh, to recap, effect is the main workhorse of the spells. The state passes between effect calls for each spell in a chain. Um, if you want to use the quantity, like if I do multiple wind tunnels, I don't have the mana for it. Let me just do a super me so I have the mana. If you wanted to like push them farther, and I did wind tunnel, wind tunnel, wind tunnel. Okay, so it's actually growing, so it is using the quantity. And you can see it's using that in adjusted radius boost. Um, we talked about prediction. And then there's some other things that are really important uh, inside of the spell itself. So if we go into spell and we go into I card, which is usually what you want, there's a few things that you might want to know. Expense scaling is how expensive the spell gets as you use it over and over for really ultra powerful spells like uh, Ultra Clone this should be above one because otherwise uh, it's just too cheap. It doesn't scale enough in terms of cost. Allow non-unit target means you can cast it on the ground, which can be important for things like target circle where you don't want to target a unit directly. Support quantity is actually important. If you're going to use quantity, support quantity needs to be true. Otherwise it will just cast over and over and over again, like slash, whereas rend where multiple need to have a differing effect, support quantity needs to be true. And then quantity will be greater than one if you have that many in the stack. Uh, this one's obvious. Ignore range is for like arrows. You can shoot beyond your range. Front load is kind of rare. This is for things that modify other spells like add pierce or add bounce are automatically front loaded because there's no reason you would want that. Only added in the middle of your uh, spell. Omit for wizard type can make a certain spell not available for like the death mason or the goru wizard or maybe uh, uh, spell mason himself. And um, yeah, those are some common gotchas for modding spells. Please reach out in Discord if you're interested in modding. I'd be happy to help.